When you think of a CEO, what does come to your mind? A person in a branded suit working from a plush uh, executive room? Never going to the workflow to talk to the employees and customers? Drawing a thumping salary? Well, in that case, you are not thinking of Costco's founding CEO, James Senegal. He was a person who was drawing a salary of $350,000 per year, which is actually one-tenth of a Fortune 500 company CEO salary. And he was a person who was going to the flow, talking to employees and customers, and more, moreover, he was a person who was answering all the calls coming to him personally. Ladies and gentlemen, we are the group five of PIM MBA batch in UAE 2015-2017. Today we are going to talk about cost course, cost leadership strategy. Look at their mission statement and operating state principle. To, with, when you look at the mission statement and operating principle, you really understand that they are not only conscious about their cost, they are also conscious about their cost, uh, their quality and the customer care. And that's not all. Let's look at some of their statistics, uh, the operational statistics. They have started operations in 1983 and they, have, they are the second largest retailer in the world and they operate 800 warehouses worldwide and they have a 70 billion market capitalization and they have 250,000 employees mind you these employees are paid above average salaries and their revenue is 116 billion dollars and they have a membership of individual membership of 25 million and 6.4 million business memberships. Let's look at their business model. They have the cost managed in their backward integration as well as their forward integration. How they are managing their costs in their forward integration? That is with, with low prices, high volumes, limited sex selection of items they are selling and wide range of categories they are selling. So with those things they end up with rapid inventory turnover. So how are they managing their cost in their backward integration? They purchase in high volumes, efficient distribution, reduced handling charges for merchandise and they, they, are end, they, they end up with operating efficiencies and combining these two they have gain profit at a very low gross margin plus mind you they have their membership fees adding to their profits now to continue here on i will hand over to anjana to start with the porter's five forces thank you kirti let's look at uh, porter's five forces uh, related to the retail industry um, looking at the uh, five forces when we fit in Costco into this framework or the retail industry into this framework. Uh, suppliers uh, switching cost is high and the volume of purchases of course very high and these are um, providing commodities for the uh, consumers. And if we look into the buyers uh, bargaining power of course the quantity they would be purchasing and the product lines and the range which is on offer and also the switching cost involved is very low so which is resulting in a, a tremendous pressure on the retailer as well as if you look at the substitutes available within the market space of course the switching cost which is involved uh, for the buyers it's it's low and there are a lot of uh, substitutes available across the mar uh, market with a lot of diversification and differentiation which is giving a comprehensive range to the consumers and also, if you look at the uh, cost of uh, the pressure of uh, new entrants into the market, of course, there's a big capital involved, and the um, effort and the cost involved in the brand presence and uh, distribution channels, operational scale um, improvement, of course, it, it is making it difficult for a new entrant to get into the market. So, all in all, this is where the five forces would be uh, at for each of these areas where uh, the suppliers bargaining power as well as the new entrants being low 
and the substitutes and the bias bargaining power being high. Next, if we look at the driving forces, which is driving the business at Costco, Internet, being a technology-driven company who is appreciating and encouraging its consumers also to, sort of to be part of their technology uh, strategy, and the environment, the um, uh, contribution to the environment, and also their different drives to um, enhance uh, environmental protection and other CSR measures. And of course, the main uh, driving force, uh, which is the cost, um, low cost model, which is the three main driving forces based what we found as part of our study. So overall, considering these um, uh, target uh, scope, as well as the advantages involved with each of the models, we were trying to see where would cost flow would fall in. Of course, it is falling on the uh, cost leadership strategy because they are mainly driven of a low cost model. We will take you through in detail in the sessions to come how well they have driven and what sort of measures they have taken implementing this strategy. Um, let's look, look at um, some internal factors which is affecting their performance and the pressures they have as a company. First, the strengths. Of course, they have low prices, which is their brand stand and, and top of the mind recall for the customers as well as a low cost uh, or, or a low price uh, offering retailer. And they have a very strong brand presence. Of course, driven by, like Kirti explains, the operational uh, efficiency and the strong membership uh, range, which is on off, uh, available. Um, when it comes to weaknesses, what we saw is that the burden of high paid workers, because their workforce is paid above their uh, average uh, wages, and then uh, the low profit margin or low price margins to meet up their local strategy, and the e-commerce activities which is taking considerable amount of investments, and also um, small marketing budget compared to uh, being discounts being offered to the uh, supermarkets. Uh, when it comes to opportunities for Costco, there are many opportunities and these are some of the key ones which we identified. Um, the the um, appeal that they uh, could make for a, a potential consumer and also um, get, let it, uh, uh, getting into expanding their operations into foreign markets and looking at mergers and acquisitions for backward as well as forward integration which would provide them a competitive edge. There are various suppliers, partners and uh, manufacturers which are um, involved in these entire end-to-end -end process with Costco, so maybe they could look at potential mergers and acquisitions which might provide them a leading edge. And of course, the like I told you, like the massive supplier pool which is available, which I have been tied up with Costco for over a long period of time, which is an opportunity which can be turned into uh, their um, competitive gain. Certain threats are also available, which is uh, the aggressive price competition from among the rivalries and of course the politician, uh, political situation, instability in foreign markets and also uh, cannibalization um, into different products and, and the marketplace. So these are some of the things when it comes to slotting in Costco into the SWOT analysis. Next let's look at uh, the low cost provider strategy in detail, having a look into the theory a little bit, Prisby will take you through that area. Thank you. Thank you Anjana. When you look at Costco as the best low-cost provider, for them to become the best low-cost provider, they have to make sure they look into their the complete value chain and bring down their cost, overall cost, not only their best but lesser, lower than the competitors. Then only they can make sure that they'll be there in the market for a longer period as the best low-cost provider. So if you look at some consideration to identify some low cost pro to identify the low cost provider strategy. Okay, price competition is very high among the uh, service providers and products are almost identical products. And most customers use the product in a similar way if you go to detergent or soap or toothpaste or anything like that. So the usage is almost similar. And for the for the customers to switch over, it doesn't cost much. It's it, it's uh, basically low switching uh, changeover. And uh, for the competitors to walk in, they can come with low introductory price. And some of the ways to achieve low cost advantage. If you look at mainly addressing the value chain, if you look at the economies of scale, the, the volume or, or the timing 
of the raw materials or any stocks that you have to purchase or you have to stock and you can look at the economic scale in that uh, uh, area and the advantage of say over a period of time you will have the experience and the expertise of certain products range that you market and have become the market lead and your operating, operating capacity the operation facility can be run in full capacity then the, uh, the raw materials can be looked at how best the low cost Raw, raw materials with good quality you can uh, purchase and the technology is one of these days in these days technology is one of the things that you can take into big advantage and the labor cost maybe with the technology advancement labor cost can be reduced or maybe the labor quality can be increased another way you can look at is looking at the firm's overall value chain say instead of doing uh, individual uh, uh, company sales or, or the warehouse sales you can directly look at selling direct to the customers right and avoiding any distribution cost uh, as as a result of the re replacement of the value chain some aspect like the technology which we discussed earlier and considering the process steps or the redundancy steps which should have been there for years we can identify them or improve or uh, and uh, or get rid of them from the process and cost efficiency in production warehouse the locations you can uh, uh, reprioritize where to minimize the, the cost that incurs in, in that line. And the product line prioritization. You can identify what are the products which are most wanted by the customers. What are the drawbacks if you look at? When you slash prices for too, too much, then you start losing the lower profit, you start lo uh, losing the profitability but in the short run okay but in the long run it will be difficult for the company and extreme cost reduction you might lose certain features of the product and you might lose the appeal from the buyers and over a period of time if you are really good at certain products the proprietary advantage you might lose because you are trying to cut cost and uh, you may reduce the quality of that product okay. with that I will hand over to Rani Las Sudashi to discuss, look into and discuss some financial analysis to you. Thank you, Rishni. With that knowledge on all the theoretical explanations on how Costco's uh, business model worked as a low-cost strategy, let's have a look at the financial analysis. Yes, Rani, let's look at this liquidity ratio, which we have, we have the current ratio and quick ratio and cash ratio. Uh, current ratio, it is almost uh, paying the old current liabilities using the current assets. And the quick ratio, which we know that it is a uh, most liquid assets to pay the current liability, as well as cash ratio is the cash that available to pay the current uh, liability. Uh, if you look at in the Costco current uh, ratio in um, 2016 August uh, month of August, which is when you compare with the 2014 and 15, and when it comes to 16, it has quite reduced. In uh, this graph, also you can see how it has been reduced. Uh, current ratio, quick ratio and cash ratio. Uh, let's look at into the assets turnover ratio, which is you know how the, um, the fixed assets has been turned over through sales. Uh, in 2016 the calculation where the total um, sales which is uh, 116 billion, then total uh, assets which is uh, 33 billion, uh, end of the day, it has been shown that 3.5 times, which is the um, assets turnover ratio. In here, when you look at uh, the comparison between Walmart and Costco, which is uh, Walmart, it has been 2.4, whereas the 2016, the Costco, which is 3.5, which is the very high rate. And uh, same that you can go to the chart and see that how uh, top level the Costco is standing, which is 3.5 compared to all other competitors in the market. Yeah, with that, uh, we will also move into the inventory turnover ratio. Now, if you look at the inventory turnover ratio of Costco, it has been hovering around the 11 days mark. That's mainly due to the efficiencies in how fast they have been able to turn over their, their inventory items from the shelves to the customer. So, they actually have a day, number of days as 11, 11 and a half, between 11 and 12. So, if you look at the industry or the inventory ratios, having this 11 is actually a massive advantage. You know, the lesser the number of days on the inventory turnover makes 
the company more efficient and more profitable eventually. So if you look at the ratios within the industry, as a wholesale industry, they are ranked as number two. And if you look at the retail sector, they are ranked as number 38 in USA. And if you take the overall USA market, they are ranked as 456. Now, that's a good position to be in as Costco, especially when they, when they are number two ranked company in the wholesale industry. Now, uh, yeah, even cash conversion circle, which is, uh, you know, that how fast they have used the cash and convert into again cash. Uh, in we can see that all the the ratios in 2000 and we have taken that in last quarter of 2016 which is 4.86 uh, uh, in uh, November which is the day sales outstanding and again the inventory which is 36.99 and end of the day we can see that Costco wholesale uh, cash conversion ratio it became November 2016 0.51 which is very good rate when we compare to the industry and this ratio is, can be made mainly because of the management efficiency. And uh, I think now we can go through with this one. Yeah, and if you look at the two other key financial ratios which we're going to ta talk today is uh, the gross margin. Now, Cos Costco's business model has been more volumes and less margins. So they've always looked at thin by choice. So they, they're, they're deciding that they're going to keep their margins as low as possible. So when you looked at the company not making up, uh, marking up the items, and they've been, even though their customers have been more affluent, but still offer best value, value, value for, for money. So if you look at the gross profit margin for Costco, it was only 13% in the year 2015, where the industry has been showing a gross profit margin of almost 30%. Now that's a huge variation compared to the industry. However, let's look at the other ratio, which is the operating profit margin, which is the which is almost the net profit of the company itself, which now Costco and its peers reveal that with a GPM of 13%, Costco still operates at an operating profit margin of 3.12%. Uh, now, they have, that means, 10% of administrative and other costs involved in their profit and loss account. Now, when you look at the PS, where they had the 30% GPM, we see even with the 30% GPM, their operating margin is only 5.82. So when you're looking at this volume-based business, what Costco is doing, with low margins, whatever they had, but with the high volumes, they have been playing a good trade. So what, they have, what, what this ratio suggested for us in our financial analysis is that the market is willing to trade at the Costco stocks because it's a very attractive uh, 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 stock item in the uh, USA, in the NASDAQ, as well as it is led by its low cost strategy. To go on to the conclusion of remarks, we will now pass it on to Charita to uh, summarize our presentation today. Thank you. Thank you, Rani and Sudarshi. Uh, let's see how they, have, uh, how they do it. Uh, they deliver big, big value, not just the, not just the prices, lower prices, and then they cater uh, customer needs. They understand the customer needs, and they treat customer service as an investment, not just a local to be shared. As well as uh, they, uh, they, uh, they offer highly targeted uh, and subsequently defined shopping experience. So let's uh, conclude now. What we have done so far, we have introduced the company, then we uh, discussed the business strategy and operating theories as well as the biz financial analysis, uh, well, key uh, financial ratios as well. So come back to the conclusion, we talk about the companies, you know, it's a highly valuable business. The business has essential strengths to take advantage of opportunities in the retail industry. And the firm is, uh, firm's low prices make it very attractive when it's during the uh, economical difficulties. Uh, the, uh, as, per our, as per our SWOT analysis, we, uh, the company has you know, opportunities to address uh, its th threats so to its long-term viability. And the, uh, the firm uh, also could use its website and uh, its, uh, its network to supply us to compete against new membership warehouse club retail companies. Costco is expected to, uh, to, to expected to continue to grow in the years to come, though uh, they have done uh, you know, fantastic 100 billion turnover in the last th three years. And uh, but last but not least, expansion is in overseas markets could also further boost the company's success. With this, we would like to conclude our uh, presentation on Costco uh, low-cost business strategy.
Thank you very much.